Hello friends, welcome to the third lecture of Real Numbers in which today we are going to discuss about how to prove that a particular number is an irrational number. Right? I am just standing with one example. The question I have written is prove that root 2 is an irrational number. Right? I have to prove that this number is an irrational See, we are uh, proving this, uh, this solution by using contradiction method. But we will suppose in the beginning, what we will do, we will prove that what we have supposed is wrong. How? Let's see. So in the beginning what I have supposed, if possible, let us suppose that root 2 is a rational number. And we uh, have discussed about rational numbers also in the beginning, in the first lecture. The rational numbers are the numbers which can be written in the form of p by q. Now, since we have supposed that root 2 is a rational number, rational number, therefore root 2 is equal to p by q, means it can be written in the form of p by q, but there is a condition. Where p and q are co-prime integers and q is not equal to 0. Now there is a new term here that is co-prime. You have heard about prime numbers. Prime numbers are basically those numbers which have only two factors like 2, 3, 5, 7. These are the prime numbers because they have only two factors. When we talk about co-prime, co-prime numbers are those numbers in which the HCF of two numbers is only one. I, I just give you an example. If I take two numbers, say 9 and 20. Now, you can see that 9 and 20 are not prime numbers. They are composite numbers. But if you find the HCF of 9 and 20, you get 1. So that is why 9 and 20 are co-prime integers. So here also, what we have supposed that P and Q are co-prime integers, it means the HCF of P and Q is 1. Now, so we simplify this, multiply this Q with root 2, I get root 2 Q equal to P. Squaring both sides, what I get? 2 Q square is equal to P square. Now, when P square is equal to 2 Q square, now this number is a multiple of these two. It means P square is divisible by 2 and Q square. But since P and Q are co-prime integers, we cannot write that P, uh, P square is divisible by Q square. So, therefore, P square is divisible by 2. Right? Now, if the square of any number is divisible by 2, then the number itself will also divisible by 2. So, what I write, P is also divisible by 2. Now, since P is divisible by 2, obviously it will be an even number because it is divisible by 2. When you divide any number by 2, you will get some question. So, we suppose that let P is equal to 2M. Now, M can be any number. I have put one equation and this is the second equation. I substitute the value of P from 2 in the 1 and what I get that 2Q square is equal to 2M whole square. Now, on opening the bracket, what I get 2Q square is equal to 4M square. Now, when I simplify this, I get Q square is equal to 2M square. Now, again, from this condition, what I have, I have that Q square is divisible by 2. Now again, if q square is divisible by 2, q is also divisible by 2. Now, in the beginning we proved that p is divisible by 2. Here we have proved that q is divisible by 2. It means they have a common factor 2. But you remember in the beginning what we said that p and q are co-prime integers. It means whatever we have found here is a contradiction. So this contradicts the fact that p and q are co-prime integers. It means what we suppose in the beginning, what we suppose that root 2 be a rational number, that is wrong. So this means root 2 is an irrational number. Now uh, uh, what is most interesting thing, you will have to learn some steps in this. But interesting thing is this, if I get root 3 here, nothing to change much. Why? The steps are same. but I will be changing this thing, 3 here, 3 here, 3 here, 
it will come 3 here, then here, this is 3q square, 3m square, Nine m square. This is three m square, and here it's all three. So you can see that steps are same. So if the number gets changed, you can accordingly change the values. So if five comes here, you can write root five equal to p by q. Here comes five, root five. This comes five and so on. So you can simplify the same type of question because the pattern is same. Now, since we talk about irrational number, it is not that these numbers are irrational number, only these are irrational. We can have the sum of a rational and irrational or a difference of rational and irrational also an irrational number or sum of two irrational numbers or the difference of two irrational numbers can also be irrational numbers. So I have written other types. Here you can see these two other types. Right? Now, I will be taking one example from here and one example from here to simplify the question. Now, let us see. Uh, now, there will be some change in the step. I am just uh, writing one of the question from the NCRD only. So, let us suppose this is your second question of exercise 1.3. So this is proof that 3 plus 2 root 5 is an irrational number. Uh, let me write it again. This is the this is your second question of exercise 1.3. So this is exercise 1.3. Second question. Alright, the beginning is same, there is no difference. We suppose it by doing it the same way that if possible, let 3 plus 2 root 5 is an irrational number. Is a rational number, sorry. Now, here also the same thing 3 plus 2 root 5, p by q, where p and q are co prime integers and q is not equal to 0. So, any question which comes for proving irrational numbers, the beginning remains same. There will be no change. So uh, when you keep on practicing these things, you will you will be uh, you will be able to learn the steps actually, right? So now what we have, there is a change now. What is the change now here? We have there is a simplification change. This is three plus two root five is equal to p by q we shift this this is 2 root 5 equal to p by q minus 3 or root 5 equals to 1 by 2 p by q minus 3 now we know that 2 and 3 both are both are rational numbers p and q are rational numbers so we write we know 2, 3, P and Q are rational numbers. Therefore, the RHS is the right hand side. I give the equation 1. RHS of 1 is a rational. Now since these two are equal, so if the right side is a rational number, then the left side will be also a rational number. This means LHS of 1 is also rational. But this contradicts the fact. What it contradicts the fact? Now what is the uh, last line? We don't have to write this thing. But this contradicts the fact that this is also not required that root 5 
five is an irrational number. So after this, you will have to write this step. Right? So since root five is an irrational number, so therefore our supposition is wrong. And th this means three plus two root five is an irrational number. Right? So if there's a minus sign, same process, no difference. If it is in different form 2 root 5 minus 3, then also the steps are same. Only the difference will be coming in uh, solving it. Right. Now we take another type of example in which both the numbers are under the root. How we will be solving that? So I take an example here. I take proof that root 3 plus say root uh, this time I take a negative negative sign, the root, uh, say root 2. So root 3 minus root 2 is an irrational number. Now the, again the steps in the beginning will be same. That is, therefore let root 3 minus root 2 equals to p by q. And uh, slight change will be here now. And just rub it out. So what is the slight chain now? Now since both are under the root, so what we do, we write squaring both sides. So scaling both sides, what do we get? We apply the formula here. This is root 3 minus root 2 whole square. P square upon Q square. So when we uh, open the brackets by applying A minus B whole identity, A minus B whole square identity, so I get 3 plus 2 minus 2 root 6 equals to P square by Q square and that is 5 minus 2 root 6 uh, equals to p square by q square. So what we have done by scaling, we have converted this form into this form in which there is only one root. Now simplifying this is easy. So what we do, we write here, uh, if we simplify it, this is therefore uh, minus 2 root 6 equals to p square by q square minus 5 or root 6 equals to minus 1 by 2, I take this negative 1 by 2, uh, sorry, negative 2 on the other side and divide it. Right, proceeding the same way, now we know, we know that 2, comma 5, comma p square and q square are rational numbers. Therefore, RHS of one is rational. So, since RHS is rational and there is an equality sign, so it means LHS is also rational. Therefore, LHS of 1 is rational but again so another contradiction but this contradicts the fact that root 6 is an irrational number and our supposition is wrong this means that the thing we have taken in the beginning that is root 3 minus root 2 is an irrational number Right. So, if you have any doubt, I have given the number in the earlier uh, lectures also. You can call me or you can write the comment uh, at the end of this video. Any doubt? Uh, one thing more. Subscribe my video. Give some like. If you like it. 
and press the bell icon also because when I will put some new video lecture, you will come to know about that by some notification. Right? Thank you. Have a nice day.